Okay, now we are ready. Can you actually hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me start this over. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to uh, introduce you to uh, Justin Carter, a former League of, League of Legends gamer who now lives in Colorado after being subject to six years of prosecutorial overreach. Who on February 14th, 2013, he was charged with a terroristic threat for posting a sarcastic message on, uh, on Facebook that was spurred by a gaming feud between him and a player of the game. He was actually arrested by Texas State Homeland Security officials in his job. And that resulted in his job directly abandoning him and firing him. He was subject to five to six months in remand. And while remand, his, his lawyer and father insisted that it was read in his proper context. But the district attorney insisted there was a terrorist threat and the judge imposed a excessive bond of $500,000 which was paid by an honest donor, donor on July 11th. His time in jail was in hell. He was assaulted by other inmates and he spent his 19th birthday behind bars and locked in solitary confinement for months. Now when he got out of jail his bail conditions were extreme. In addition, the district attorney has been stalling the case, has stalled the case repeatedly for the past five years. And while the, and while the uh, district attorney was stalling, his life was put on hold for the past five years. On top of that, Carter was forbidden from using any online services without the private consent of the corrections department of the county. It, it wasn't until in April 2018 that the district attorney offered him a plea, a plea bargain. He, he signed, he uh, pled guilty to a class A misdemeanor and signed away his rights to sue the state of Texas for the prosecutorial overreach. And after which he uh, pled Guilty to that class A misdemeanor, he was sentenced to time served. After the uh, plea deal, he uh, subsequently moved to Col to Colorado, which he is living there to this day. Uh, Justin Carr, I want to welcome you to the Ministry of Otaku. My name is uh, J Kid, and these are my uh, magical familiars, Bojan the Bear and Skates the Sea Turtle. But I want you to uh, introduce yourself to the audience. I mean, I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, I was arrested for making a joke on Facebook. It wasn't directly related to League of Legends or video games like people uh, think. Uh, actually, that's a pretty pop, uh, common misconception. Uh, the media did not cover my case all the way and missed a lot of key facts. So there's a lot of misinformation up there regarding my case, what led up. Oh. Uh, it was actually just a post on Facebook where I was uh, joking with these kids who were trying to like ask people to rate them on Facebook. And so I was rating them well just to get a rise out of them really uh, for fun. And then one of them called me fucked up in the head and then the comments that I made after that would be the one on the rest. Hmm. Trying to sarcastically say what a messed up person do. Hmm. Are there any more information that they missed? They, they got a couple of the dates wrong, like specifically regarding how long I was in jail. They say five months. It was six months. Uh, they, they also like made it seem like I was facing 10 years prison time like right at that moment when in reality the maximum sentence for a third degree felony 
Class C is 10 years. So that's only the maximum. I wasn't necessarily facing 10 years uh, unless they threw the book at me, which they were seemingly willing to do. Hmm. I see. But I want to get I want to get into you uh, in the I want to ask you a few questions in the first place. How did you get into League of Legends in the first place? One of my friends actually uh, suggested the game to me while I was really into StarCraft 2. Uh, suggested a game called League of Legends. It was very new back. It was, I think, still in... It had just come out of beta, and I got into it then. And I, I just fell in love with it. It was an amazing game. It was Every game was different. Every game was new. And it was a lot of fun. Even though the uh, same game, even though the game is only has one map, some was whiffed. Yeah, it, it still felt new every time because of the new players, and you get to make friends and enemies while playing the game as well. I see. How did you got into video gaming in the first place? I started video gaming when I was. About three years old, my dad gave me a controller for a PlayStation 1, and I played Road Rash 3D for my first game ever. Ah, Road Rash. <laughs> you know, there's actually a remake of Road, 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 Road Rash, a spiritual uh, remake known as Road Redemption. I think it's out right now. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. I should, I should, I'll definitely post you a link to the game. Okay, what is your best moments of video gaming? I think some of the best moments of my career of video gaming has been when I used to compete professionally in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I would do tournaments for that, and I got pretty far in one of the tournaments until my internet just... It was both the best and worst moment of gaming. Hmm, I see. But I want to get to the actual incident of the uh, feud. What was the feud about that caused you to make this uh, sarcastic comment? So, yeah, basically I was just telling this girl that she didn't need uh, people to rate her online to feel good about herself. If she had self-esteem issues, she should talk them out with a professional. And... You know, people were attacking me, and I was defending myself, and uh, then someone called me effed up in the head, and, you know... Uh, uh, seriously, you don't have to uh, censor your words. This is the internet. Go ahead and say, uh, say, fuck, say, say fucked up. It's the internet. I mean, yeah, they said, they said I was fucked up in the head, and I, uh, I didn't agree. So I made a hyperbolic statement that would reflect what a person who is fucked up in the head would do i.e. commit a massacre, because that is terrible. Um, and so I posted that as like a satirical, hyperbolic statement stating that is what a fucked up person would do. And it got taken out of context completely, just screenshotted. Only parts of it were screenshotted, and not the whole statement or threat or everything. There were missing parts, and that was the evidence that was submitted to the state. And that's what they arrested me based on. Just an out of context screenshot. Could happen to anyone. And can you describe the Tao, uh, the Tao, uh, ordeal from arrest to a man, especially how the state of Texas actually sent their own homeland security officials to arrest you so, while in, so while you were at your workplace? So yeah, I was at work when I was picked up. However, they had SWAT team uh, at my old address, which I did not live at anymore. Uh, and they shut down a school across the street from that old address, which I did not live at anymore. And they picked me up at my work while I was getting off of work. My boss got a phone call. Uh, he seemed very on edge afterwards. I asked him what, what it was, and he said, nothing, we're just going to hang out here for a little bit. Turns out that the... Department of Security or Homeland Security, I don't know who exactly, called him and told him not to let me leave and that they were coming to pick me up and that I was a terrorist. So that's what they told him and that's why he made me stay without telling me. I really rather he preferred to tell me so I could hire a lawyer beforehand, uh, but I was ambushed completely. I didn't know. And he just abandoned you like that. Yeah, and 
but the sad thing is he was uh, he was like a friend of our family too so hmm. I really wish he would have told me I wouldn't have run I had, I would have just called a lawyer or called my parents you know said hey I'm about to be arrested call a lawyer yeah so anyway what happens after the arrest and the entire process of you going to uh, going straight to going straight to jail after your arrest because I've seen so many uh, jail and prison documentaries on YouTube but I want to hear your sp perspective so yeah when they first picked me up they talked to me in the car I had no problem first of all I didn't know why why I was being arrested they refused to tell me straight out uh, they said you know what you did when I asked them why I was being arrested they said you know what you did so I didn't know what I had done I had completely forgot about the statement I made the next day. It was gone. So I didn't even know until later, about 20 minutes into the car ride, they started telling me what it was about And because I, I really didn't know. I kept insisting like I don't know. And so they, they started believing me. And then they, we had a conversation in the car. Uh, they, they asked me, you know, why I said that. And I told them it was just like uh, sarcasm, blah, blah, blah. And they said, well, it scared people. Don't you know you can scare people by saying stuff like that? And I said, I had no intention of causing fear. It was totally not meant that way at all. And they seemed to, to be convinced because uh, I believe it was a federal case at the time and they dropped that and the state of Texas picked it up. So this, so it, so it was a federal offense, yet the state of Texas actually picked it up. The, uh, the district attorney actually picked it up even though they dropped the federal case. Why is that? Why are they doing I believe that they felt they had a chance to get something out of me because they, they had been arresting people for similar offenses during this time. In fact, I ran into a couple of those people in jail who were arrested for very similar offenses. And I think they thought they could just pick me up and I would end up paying them a bunch of money and I, they, I, they would make money off of I believe that's why they, they picked it up. Because one conversation with me would have told you I planned on hurting nobody or causing any fear. And what happened to your uh, peop to the uh, people that were caught doing that in jail? What happened to them? What, did they face the same fate as you? A lot of them faced uh, terroristic threat charges as well. In fact, one of the first people who I knew actually agreed to a plea deal for eight years of prison. And he was very scared. He was young. Uh, he didn't know what to do. He, didn't, he had a free lawyer. And the free lawyer, just like he told the free lawyer told me, told him that eight years was a good deal, even though I didn't believe it, but he did. So he ended up going to prison. Okay, but what about your situation in uh, in jail? What was the uh, jail intake process was for you? I was in three different jails uh, throughout this time because they did not know where I committed the offense in. They were trying to figure out whose jurisdiction it was. So they didn't really know anything. I told them all the information right off the bat, but they didn't seem to know where where I was from. So I ended up printing and doing all the intake stuff at Bear County Jail in San Antonio. And then they transferred me after about two weeks to Travis County Jail, where I was placed in the uh, part of the jail where you work to like help pay off your debt to society. You work trustee is what it's called them mm -hmm. trustee. And uh, so I clean, I cleaned the kitchen and stuff for about two months in Travis County Jail. And then the detectives finally came and talked to me after that. How was the interrogation process for the detectives? So they, yeah, after two and a half months, they interrogated me uh, not long. Then they, they told me, I told them I was scared and I was not being treated well in jail and stuff like that. And they took advantage of that to tell me not to bring in a lawyer, that it would go faster if I didn't bring a lawyer, and they told me to just admit to it and they would let and they would let me go faster. Oh god. So, so Black tent lies. It's so a I trap. Signed, yeah. So I ended up signing away uh, the ability to talk to a lawyer and uh, during that have a lawyer present during that interview. Then I also told them what they wanted to hear, which was the truth. I mean, I did post the comment. That's all, that's all they asked me. They asked me what the intent behind the comment was, and I told them the truth, that uh, it was not intended to cause fear or harm. 
and they still try and they still threw you through the ringer anyway. Yes, and then after that, they transferred me again to the county that I actually uh, allegedly committed the offense in, which was Comal County Jail, which was by far the worst one. And the previous two jails were actually a lot better. What? Why is that? Uh, Comal County Jail. It just got renovated recently, uh, but it was very old. It hadn't been renovated in a while. There were it was brick and mortar. Uh, it was every gate was rusted, uh, so every time the door opened, it would make a horrible screeching noise. I was in intake, the drunk tank, for seven days, and during those seven days, they do not give you a blanket, a pillow, a bed. You're waiting for a bed in the, for those seven days. So I had to wrap myself in toilet paper to stay warm until they threatened to take all the toilet paper away. So I was freezing cold and fed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on for a week. Oh my god, but I'm talking about the previous two jails before the third worst jail. The previous two were better because you... The, well, the Bear County Jail is not much better. It's still pretty bad, but at least you got a bed right away. Hmm. Um, and Travis County Jail was, was nice because I was a trustee. I was working, and you know, it was half the time. They let you get booked in the mail uh, from Amazon, which is very nice because I... My family sent me some reading materials, so I got to read a lot and just, you know, hope for the best for those two months. I didn't really get hurt a lot in Travis County Jail at all. In fact, I think only one person threatened me uh, in Travis County Jail. So that one wasn't bad at all. I did get hurt in Bear County Jail, and they tried to attack me in the showers, so I did not go to the shower. I mean, real question is why you were attacked in in the third jail you was why you was attacked frequently in that jail in, in Kamal County Jail I was attacked frequently because the guard well one instance the guard directly told a inmate that I was threatening to hurt children and so the inmate oh. took it upon himself to attack me uh, based on that then in another instance someone found my paperwork while I was sleeping because they give you all your paperwork it's on you all the time in jail and so I hide it under my mattress. However, they came in and got it while I was asleep and read it and then beat me up and I had to kite out of that cell block as well. Eventually ending up in solitary confinement. For your own protection. Right. I mean, oh, I see. I mean, it's terrible. And I heard uh, from one visitor at the Discord that you was uh, sexually assaulted. Is that true? Yes. Yes, I filed a police report on that. And, uh, it's also reported already. So. Uh, how how was that? How did you get such a result? If you are comfortable uh, describing it. I mean, I'd rather uh, not go too deep into that. Uh, un understandable, understandable, because uh, sexual assault uh, by males is really not a lot lot common than you than you think. But I'm not going to get into it. But what is the jail routine, day by day process for you in those three jails? Well, it varied, but generally they wake you up pretty early for breakfast, for like juice and pills if you need pills. Uh, I don't, so I would just they would wake us up for that. Then you would go back to sleep and wake up in another two hours for breakfast. Then you would try and sleep as much as humanly possible for a few months. Uh, just sleep, 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 because nothing passes time quite like dreaming. Uh, then you would get like an hour of, well, like you could choose to go out to the yard if you want, which in Kamal County was just a brick enclosure that was still kind of inside. It wasn't really outside. You couldn't see this at all. So that was not very fun. Then you watch TV. Hope no one got in a fight over the TV channels. Uh, sometimes people would mess with the guards because they're bored, or fight each other because they're bored. You know, uh, there's pretty much. Uh, what TV shows do you usually watch in jail? Well, it was a mostly Hispanic population, so we watched telenovelas oh. and other Spanish programs. Even the two previous jails. Even the two previous jails. Yeah. Mostly Hispanics. 
Amazing. Uh, yeah. Majority. Well, it's Texas, you know, so there's a, we're right on the border. There's a lot of people there. Yeah, I actually visited Texas, Texas uh, many years ago, around 2014, 2013. Yeah, 2013. And, yeah, anyway, another question, okay, yeah, we already went for the, uh, yeah, how was your time in solitary confinement? So, the solitary confinement was, okay, uh, it was pretty soul-crushing just because you're all alone all day, every day with nothing but your thoughts, and the phone sometimes comes along and you're allowed to, they wheel it outside the and sometimes you're allowed to grab it and make a call. So that's my only real connection. And the calls are expensive, very expensive. I've racked up about $1,000 in phone calls. My God, that is really uh, high, highway robbery. That's really highway robbery. They also for charge you for basic things like deodorant when you're in jail. God, that is insane. I couldn't afford it one time. And so I wasn't smelling very good, and I was attacked because of that. Fuck. So, yeah. Oh, uh, random to rage. We're going to get to that question. Okay, ask him how does he, he, has he, how does he feel having gone through all this, and what's his plan go moving forward? Uh, we're going to get to that later. And now, anyway, the, uh, the bail process. You finally been, uh, you finally, uh, went to a bail hearing eventually uh, after the six months I there was a bail hearing set for me I didn't go um, but they doubled my ba my bail there at that hearing uh, why did they double your bail why I don't know I, I really don't know I was in jail I had no way of bailing out at the price was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, when it got to Kumau County, they set a bail hearing and doubled it to $500,000, even though I hadn't, nothing had changed. They just decided they didn't like me. They really didn't want me. Because, of the, because they think you're, you're an actual terrorist, even though you're not. I suppose that's the reason. I don't see how they could think I was an actual terrorist. I'm, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me. First, so, I don't know. And the, uh, bail, and the, and someone actually did, uh, and someone actually did, uh, uh, gave you bail. Right. When the, around the end of the six month mark, when the media started coming in and discussing my case and, uh, there was a, like a media bullet involving my case and freedom of speech and stuff like that, uh, an anonymous donor saw the piece and uh, he was reminded of his own son, who is my age. And he felt like compelled to put up the full amount, five hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. And what was your parents' reaction? When, well, my uh, both my mother and father were there when I walked out the doors. They were very emotional, as a, as I was. I was more shocked than anything else. I didn't believe it was real for uh, about two or three days. It took me a while to, to believe that I was actually free. I kept thinking it was some sort of prank or dream or hmm. I see. And the uh, bail conditions. What were you, your bail conditions? Because they, because uh, I read through the uh, news articles and they did not disclose all the bail conditions. The only major bail conditions is that you are not allowed to use any internet service under your name without the express permission of the Department of Corrections. Right. And I tried to get them to allow me to use the internet, the Department of Corrections, with their express written consent. However, they said they had to go to the judge. And uh, my lawyer told me that was not a good idea to open up my bond to the judge, because once I once it's opened up to him on his floor, uh, he can change it any way he wants. He could say I need a, a bracelet, a tracking monitor. I He could say I need to pay fines. He can say anything. So we just decided that we were going to leave it as it was, however restrictive it was, which was very restrictive. Now, uh, what were the other bail conditions that was uh, was that was restricted? Can you can, do you remember all your bail conditions? 
I remember the big ones, the important ones, the ones that actually affect business, which were uh, no internet access, which made it very hard to get a job in the modern world. Uh, every place I applied to required some form of internet access or to be able to use the internet while working. Uh, so that made job hunting pretty hard. Then I also had to stay a, a thousand feet away from any place where children may gather. And that one was very vague. And it, when I asked my bond officer what exactly it meant, he told me to not go outside at all and to just stay home because that could be anywhere. A child, children may gather at any location. So I was uh, scared. Very scared to go back to jail. So I didn't go anywhere at all. Uh, the other restrictions were I yeah, I couldn't live with a minor. A lot of minor related stuff. Like uh, it was your typical sex offender type bond, even though I wasn't one. They just kind of threw it together at the last second because they weren't expecting me to get out. So they see they so they treated you as a sex offender. Even though you commit a very unrelated crime. Right. They also made my bond higher than any sex offender I've ever met or seen or heard of. Uh, that's insane. That's insane. I mean, I mean, how can you live five, six years on these insane bail conditions? Well, my family was really surprised really, really supportive. Um, not only that, the anonymous donator uh, helped me a lot through my tough time. Uh, he kept contact with me and actually went so far as to help me get a job and get a place and things like that. He was very, very nice. Wait, so you actually so you actually got a new job in a new place? Yes, eventually, after about three and a half years. I mean, seriously, I mean, how can you survive without the internet, even though you have a job in place? In all reality, I did use the internet while I was restricted from doing so. Uh, I just didn't use it in my name. They didn't have any way of knowing. It's kind of an unenforceable law or rule. There's no way to enforce that. So I, I just played video games anonymously and did things anonymously. I couldn't sign up for jobs. I couldn't sign up for anything that required me to actually use my social security number or anything that identified me as Justin Carter. But I did play games and did do things still. So. Uh, what video games did you play? I played League and CSGO for those six years, pretty much. And that was, that was the only way that you could be uh, sane, because without your video games, you, you'd be probably stuck watching TV. Well, you know, I'm a gamer. I've always been a gamer, so... Telling me uh, I can't play games for six years is a pretty tough sell. So, you know, I, I played, yeah, I played games. They, they helped me stay happy in my life. I see, but all you could do was go, was basically wake up, go straight to work, and then go straight home. Basically, like almost a hermit, a court enforced hermit. And once I, I could go to bars, however, I was also legally restricted from drinking. So, once I turned 21, I couldn't celebrate. I see. Now, now here's the thing. The district attorney responsible for your case, he was actually actively stalling it for the past five to six years. And two, he, he was actually doing it to actually conflate all cases similar to yours as terrorism. The, he, he, the district attorney actually thought that your case was similar to Islamic terrorists. Well, they didn't actually stall. They, they were pretty ready uh, quickly. We actually filed several appeals, uh, and those appeals took years each. So that was the delay. It wasn't the, the prosecution that was the delay. Honestly, they they seemed pretty ready to go with no evidence. Oh, I see. I see. That's very interesting. And and the and the and the uh, do you know what's the name of the district attorney that 
was responsible for this case? I know who was in the courtroom, uh, the assistant district attorney, Jennifer Tharp, T-H-A-A-R-P, who is now, I believe, ADA for Travis County. Uh, she was she was in charge for a while, uh, and then she moved county about four years into my, my trial. Someone else took over. Yes, yeah, and she's actually still doing this. She's actually still prosecuting prosecuting similar cases to yours. Yeah. So he, she's been actually doing this, and she's been actually pulling this crap on other people. I, as far as I'm aware, yeah. I mean, she she really believes, like, extremely adamant that all online bullying is terrorism. Even though, even though a good portion of online bullying isn't isn't that online bullying can be can be construed as harassment, death threats, criminal threatening. Online bullying is not terrorism. It's not uh, the legal definition of terrorism. Terrorism is basically uh, violence, systematic violence that has a political, ideological, or religious end. It's impossible. I mean, these days, words like uh, like fascism, Nazism, white nationalism, and also uh, terrorism get stretched and used and expanded so and used so many times that it means nothing. It means nothing. She was really trying to make her career, uh, I think, based on this case. She thought it would uh, enhance her career and maybe get her promoted or something. She was trying to set a precedent uh, by finding me guilty and making it seem as though all online bullying could be construed as terrorism, which thankfully they didn't. I, thankfully, I fought the case because otherwise anyone online saying anything to anybody could be construed as terrorism and they could be locked up for it. Even though, even though what you said had no political, ideological, or religious end, she still views it as terrorism. Yeah, she said that in open court. I believe it is in transcript somewhere. And it's really amazing that the United States has actually been through actual uh, incidents of terrorism, and she just throws it around like a word, like it's nothing. I would not compare uh, what I said or did with uh, the horrible acts of 9/11 or any other bombing. That and especially the uh, especially the uh, the the uh, mass sure that that happened in and I know that that young white that young uh, that young sure who actually slaughtered around 10 or 20 worshippers at a church. The one, the one in Southern Spring. Ah, uh, yes, and and currently he's facing the death penalty. Sounds about right. Yeah, definitely. And and the plea deal, in the plea deal, what caused the uh, plea deal to occur? Uh, the one that I finally took. Yes. Well, they offered me several plea deals before that. Uh, one was eight years in prison. One was. I believe eight years probation, but I also had to write a letter defining freedom of speech, which was a slap in the face because they were trying to, they, it was insane. We laughed, we laughed, me and my lawyers all laughed when we saw that clause that they wanted me to write a letter about freedom of speech uh, as an apology. Uh, so we kept fighting, kept fighting, confident we would win. Uh, eventually they just, it took so long uh, the appeals didn't go our way. They just took forever, and I was running out of funds to survive, really. So then when they came at me with a deal to just say I could walk out of there that day free, of course I, I took it, especially with with only a misty. Hmm. I see. So you just took it and pled guilty. You got time served. And that was it. What happens? What happened next? Um, I immediately packed the car 
that night and started driving 18 hours to Colorado. You just want to leave Texas for good because because you because uh, there was no point staying in a state that that basically tells you that they, they, they basically screwed you over. Right. There was a lot of bad memories in it. Texas. For those past five years. Yeah. And so I just wanted a new start, a fresh start. And I, I know, actually, you told me about the fact that you was actually homeless in Texas. This was very prior to these, uh, these charges, but yes. I was a minor at the time. I see. And so, uh, and, and in Colorado, in Colorado, there's actually another part of your family. Yes, my, my family lives out here. The other half of my dad, uh, they live out here. So I was offered a room and I moved immediately because I just didn't, I was evicted right when my, right when this happened, I had just been evicted. Uh, because my lease was up and I didn't want to renew because I didn't know how long, much longer the case would be going on. So I was evicted about a week before they gave me the plea deal. So it was kind of perfect timing because I could, I could go, you know, where I had a home. Oh, I see. I That's very understandable. And is it a small town in Colorado? Yes, very small. Very small. Uh, it's like a, one of those rural towns you just drive right through on, on the highway. And uh, you don't know this. I mean, what's there's there in this in this town? What's there? There's a store, like a uh, store where you buy all your stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not very big. It's not a Walmart. It's very small. Uh, and uh, that's and then I guess a gas station and two bars. And is there a church? Yeah, there's like two churches. And that's it, just store, just uh, a store, a bar, and two churches. Yeah. I mean, how far is it? How far is it away from uh, from Denver? I mean, Denver is a major city in Colorado. Very far, on the other side of the mountain. Oh my! So very rural yeah. county, and and what's the job market there? Almost non-existent. It's amazing that town still exists. Well, the people who work where they work have been working there and have been grandfathered in from their families living here, you know, so it's not like they're new open positions. I mean, I mean, how do the other people make their living? Do they have to commute? Growing, they, they, it's like a farming community, so there's a lot of people who grow crops, uh, animals, cows, uh, stuff like that, and sell them. I see. And... I mean, what's your routine there with this, uh, with, in your new town? I usually go out in the morning to do like a morning walk slash jog and, uh, just to get a little bit of exercise out here. Then, I mean, pretty much the same routine as it was before the, before I got freed. I hang out online and play video games. And, and that's the, except for League of Legends, because the internet, I, from what I heard, the internet in your area is bad. Are you using satellite internet? No, that would be even worse. Um, I'm using some company called Brainstorm, and they give me one megabit down and one megabit up. That's it. And that's not enough to really game. And it doesn't, it's not steady either. Um, so I can't really play like competitive online games, I mostly played single player. Uh, what was the latest single player game you played? I played a game called Detroit Become Human. Oh. Uh, oh god, I actually good. seen uh Future Man's game Future Man Gaming's uh, stream of uh the game. I actually saw one of the endings, and it was I'm not going to spoil it to you, but it was a shocker. I'm definitely not going to spoil it to you, but and there are many endings to Detroit Becoming Human. Yes. Detroit Become Human. So you own you so you own a PS4 and and a PC. Well, my family owns the PS4, but yeah, I've owned this PC since uh, I guess four years ago. 
Hmm. I got it four years ago. I've had it for four years. I see. Uh, what are your goals since it's difficult to get a job these in, where you live unless you're willing to move to Denver? Well, currently I have a GoFundMe up to help raise money for a car so I can drive to where the jobs are about two hours away and work a regular job there. Uh, also, I have a stream. When the internet's good enough, I try to stream. It's not very often, unfortunately. Cause yeah, do you stream on Twitch or YouTube? I was streaming on Twitch, however. I think I'm going to be switching over to YouTube permanently because Twitch is a little bit too restrictive, and they censor a lot of stuff, and they cater towards girls who can bring in young viewers, oh, and man. I'm not one of those. I see. Understandable. Understandable. Uh, understandable. Uh, can you uh, PM me the uh, channel? My YouTube channel? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. It might take a second. The internet's not very good at night. So sometimes stuff takes time to send, but I did send it. Okay. Currently, I've just made a couple videos just to learn editing and practice my editing. Uh, they're not perfect by far, but I find it fun and enjoyable, and I try to make funny stuff that I like that I think will be funny. Uh, I see. I mean, have you ever actually considered moving to Denver eventually? Well, the nearest city I would move to probably would be either Montrose or Grand Junction, as they're a little closer, hmm. uh, and big, big cities as well. So there's, you know, job market there. I, you know, I would move there, but if I'm going to move somewhere, I'd rather move to L.A., honestly. Yeah, I, I understand, Bo. But uh, have you tried connecting with and contacting other streamers about these goals on Twitch and YouTube? Other streamers on Twitch. To see if they can actually help you uh, learn the ropes. Well, I I reached out to some I uh, good friends with a guy named Guy Williams, who's a content creator on YouTube and a uh, streamer. He actually raised money to help me get out of jail. Uh, he made one of the first videos about me and really helped kickstart all of the support. So he 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 was he's a good guy. I know him. I talk to him regularly. We're friends. But uh, I mean, people don't usually want to plug other people's stuff. They they see it as promoting and like leeching and self promoting. So they they don't really want to do that, and they don't want to help you get started either. Usually, it's kind of a competitive market. So there's only here's the thing. You have to here's the thing. You have to network in order to be to be successful. Even though some with you as leeching. You have to network, and people have to help people out. It's a community. Yeah, I agree, and that's why I'm really looking forward to trying to connect with the It's Decided community and try and get on their stuff, which is why I want to go out to L.A. just to meet them. Mm, I see. But what about your actual story? Have you told all this to, uh, to the mainstream media after you got released? Have you tried getting your story out? There was a press release that we sent out to the media. And some of the articles did mention, uh, you know, all this, the goals and everything, and even the GoFundMe, which was great. Uh, but it didn't really get picked up as hard as it did when I first got arrested, because uh, I guess there were just bigger, pop, more popular stories going on. So it didn't blow up as quite as hard as I hoped. Hmm. I see. And, and and most of the streamers that that you try to reach to about what you've gone through, they but they basically ignored you. Right, I reached out to over forty different content creators on multiple platforms. Uh, not very many have gone back to me. In fact, only recently have I received uh, replies from from anyone. Yeah, I know it's terrible. I mean, seriously, it's very difficult to network if they're just going to ignore. 
your your information or contact or your contacts or your messages. Most people don't take online interactions very seriously. It's easier to just ghost and ignore. Right. And, uh, not, not only that, but I'm not a manager. I don't know the lingo that gets people's attention. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not very good at marketing myself, really, I guess. Yeah, me either. I, I'm not really that active on, on social media. And even on Twitter, I just retweet stuff. And I uh, interact with people only to ask a few questions or to comment on stuff. I'm not really active on uh, social media for the most part. But anyway, I heard right now when you made your AMA that you're actually being slandered and slandered through PM as a Nazi, Trump supporter, and, in, and an incel by neurotic people who don't know or don't care about your background or the case itself. Yeah, there, there was, I posted an AMA late at night uh, and it went very well. Uh, when I woke up, I guess some other subreddits had caught wind of it and were coming in and brigading it and they, they had said pretty mean, nasty things, but, I mean, I got arrested for trolling. Uh, I can handle it, you know? I, I, it wasn't a big deal to me. I thought some of the stuff they were saying was pretty funny. It just concerned me that they, that they were... I was worried that they were serious at first until someone had told me that they were trolling. And I didn't, I didn't know. Because if they were serious, I was kind of worried for their own, you know, mental well-being. They didn't seem very stable to me. Hmm. Wow. But seriously, what is your favorite? Have you watched anime before? I've seen a few. I'm not a super fan of anime. Don't like uh, too many of them. I've, I pretty much only like one anime. And what's that? Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, the original or the Brotherhood version? I like both of them. I uh, oh, I haven't. I <laughs> oh, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the entirety of the original or the Brotherhood, but I heard the manga is actually uh, great. I've never read a manga. I can't read backwards. It's very counterintuitive for me. <laughs> uh, what about comics? I don't read comics either. Now books mostly. A lot of books. Hmm. I see. Ah, oh, wow. But seriously, that's all the questions I have for you. It's been an honor and and pleasure speaking with you. And personally, I hope to uh, to see you succeed. Seriously, Godspeed to you. And, and and hopefully. Our lives, our lives will get better. Yes, I hope that your situation improves as well. I see, thanks. Anyway, for people who are interest, who are really interested in uh, helping Justin Carter, uh, go to his uh, GoFundMe at www.gofundme.com slash justin-carter-assistance-fund if you want to, if you also want to help me be a full-time streamer like uh, Justin Carter, uh, visit my my GoFundMe page at www.gofundme.com/help-jk-get-out-of-debt-debt. And yeah, here's my put spaces in the GoFundMe. They only allow dashes. So <laughs> that's why there's a lot of dashes. Yeah, <laughs> figures. Well, that's it. Good night. Well, it was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much, man. You too. You have a good one. You too. Have a good night. Ugh.
Oh god. There you have it. The exclusive interview with Justin Carter. And thank God he's in a very comfortable place. After all the hell he went through. God. 